Now, I have some like more like business like questions for you. We touched on uh, before the pre-show. Uh, sure. So the, I so I'm very familiar with the banking industry, and I'm curious like how you navigate. I'm gonna, I want to call it kind of a shit storm when it comes to cannabis and banking. You know, put it exactly. yeah, because I know there's some legal things you can't do. And you said uh, you actually were able to secure loans, everything like that. So I'm curious, like how you went about that, how your brand and your company is navigating that shithole. I'm just gonna call it a shithole because it's not fair to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think a couple of things. One is we're one of the lucky ones. And um, I think it's important to distinguish between unbanked and underbanked. Okay. Right. Cannabis, you know, is and so for some people is unbanked and for some people is underbanked. Right. And okay. So we're we're one of the lucky ones uh, to have bank accounts and, you know, those types of things. But we're still vastly underbanked. Like yeah. Lines of credits and stuff like that. Are, it's ridiculous. Are almost unheard of in, in cannabis. And it's part of the reason that I'm a big advocate and think that our, you know, the U.S. Congress and Senate need to get their shit together and pass safe banking is it's good public policy because it keeps people safer because they don't have cash on site. Yep. Um, and it's also social equity as well, because, again, we're a larger company, audited, public, uh, you know, 70 millions in, in, in growing in revenue, et cetera. Right. Like. We can get bank accounts. Somebody who needs help, who's starting a first business, who's been harmed by the war on drugs, who's trying to open, you know, a brand or store, like they can't. And that makes what is hard, harder. And so uh, I think safe banking is, is good for the safety of people. You know, you, can, you don't have to look very hard to see people getting shot at dispensaries because they're easy targets. It's good public policy because it keeps cash in bank accounts, which means taxes get paid and workers comp and all the other things yep. that come with the tracking. It's good for the industry because we could use credit cards, which I think would grow, uh, you know, the industry by a good, you know, 25 to 30 percent. And then it's good social equity because the people who have the hardest time now and need the help the most uh, would find some relief. So I think that's something that you know, really should happen. Um, we did it by starting three years ago, building relationships with on prior relationships and, you know, being one of the first um, uh, cultivation customers of a large bank that wanted to get into space. And, you know, they did site visits and they did audits and they did inspections of our offices and records. And, you know, really what they're trying to prove is that they're not going to become complicit in some nefarious operation. And so, that takes a lot of work for them and then they need to get compensated for it, for it to make sense for their business. That relationship eventually grew into the hundred million dollar loan that we, um, that we just recently pulled down. Um, and so, you know, now they're getting paid for it, which they get outsized returns because it's cannabis. So yep. they pay, you have to pay higher rates. Don't you? Yeah. So, I mean, we got a good deal at 10%, which is it's probably unheard twice of. Yeah. what you would pay in any other industry. <laughs> That's probably pretty good for your industry, though, because consider you know the risk of the business. Yeah. I'm sure they probably charge 15, 20, and just absolutely just destroy people. Yeah, I mean, I think the best the best I've seen is eight percent, and that was I forget Cure Leaf or True Leaf, which is you know one of the the biggest companies out there. So at ten percent, we're doing pretty well. By accessing this podcast, you acknowledge that the Penny Lane podcast makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional or financial advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, the Penny Lane podcast does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast. And information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. The third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of the Penny Lane podcast. The Penny Lane podcast assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.